Good people, welcome to our gaming headset buying guide, where we're not gonna tell you which headsets to buy, but you can use everything you learn in this video to buy the right one. I mean, we're talking driver size, platform compatibility, wireless versus hybrid versus wired, closed versus open, etc. So let's start with the somewhat heated aspect in this whole conversation, stereo versus surround. So this one gets people riled up and for some reason, it seems like surround sound has really penetrated the marketing aspect of gaming headsets and it's like a must have for any gamer out there, but that's not really the case. The basic rundown is this, a stereo headset should still deliver proper positional and directionality and even distance cues of your game for you to realize where certain things are coming from. And for some reason, surround sound is sold and almost misunderstood as like the only way to achieve this sort of spatial awareness of your game, which is not true at all. My Nova Pro Wireless from SteelSeries gives me better directionality and distance of like certain audio cues in Battlefield and CS2 than the HyperX Cloud 3 Wireless when I enable surround sound on this headset. So there's a clear example on how stereo in my opinion, always wins. Because with surround sound, you normally lose critical detail. So anything in the mid range becomes artificially further away and EQ'd beyond normal. And the only time you'd actually want to enable surround sound is with games that don't have critical audio. So strategy games, third person, single player games mostly, where you would still gain some directionality awareness, but it's, um, you know, it's sacrificing a little bit of that very precious detail. I actually prefer surround sound for driving games when I'm inside the car that artificially expands your sound environment and you feel like, you know, everything around you is much bigger than it really is. In comparison to like a closed headset, I mean. So if you see Dolby Atmos, I would say it is a really good value add, especially because it comes free with certain Corsair headsets. So that's a nice half. But when I see people talk about surround sound for competitive games, that's a big no for me. Next up is build quality. Plastic does not mean bad build quality. You know, plastic means a light frame, it means flexible, and even though we might have certain metal bits scattered around that might have nice uh, feeling from the headset, don't be afraid by the plastic nature in gaming headsets and actually headphones in general because it is the right material. In reality, I would say it's best to research the headset you want to buy for common faults and long-term reviews on how certain things have held up over time, not just that initial review period, because that might highlight certain points to, to be careful around, or there's like a particular really big issue that uh, you might want to avoid altogether. And common issues on gaming headsets, <laughs> that list is fairly long, which includes loose microphone arms, loose size extensions, left or right channel losing audio due to worn out interior cabling, disintegrating ear cups, on headset controls not working, extension plugs getting loose, driver issues with a dongle, headset suddenly stopping working, etc. Also quality of batches for headsets can vary. So just like with mice, you know, some copies are good, some bad, uh, same thing happens with a headset. So regardless of which Reddit form you end up with, there's always a ton of quality control issues among headsets in every brand category. Moving on to general headset specifications and to tell you the truth, most of the time they don't really matter. What do these two headsets have in common? 50 millimeter drivers, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz frequency range and 32 ohms impedance. But they sound nothing alike and are priced way differently. So I look for three main things when looking at headphone specifications, any information about the driver aside from the size, sensitivity values if present, and also bit depth for USB and wireless headsets. Now the size of the driver varies significantly between my three most used pairs. The Maxwell has a 90 millimeter driver, but they are planar magnetic, they move a lot of air, so they have to be large. G Pro X2 has a 50 millimeter driver, but with graphene material, so it's stiff and lightweight to avoid distortion while my Nova Pro Wireless is only a 40 millimeter driver. It seems like it's so much smaller, but it actually delivers proper enough audio for, for me to enjoy on a daily basis. So tuning is probably even more important than the size of the driver. You might see HyperX advertise angled 53 millimeter drivers, and that is so that it positions the drivers optimally for better audio delivery with natural soundstage expansion. And you can dive into the debate whether that works and whether that's marketing or engineering. I say it works, but not necessarily with the Cloud 3 series. I find the Cloud 2 soundstage expansion to be better. Now, sensitivity values will tell you how loud the headset will get. Unfortunately, how that data is presented and collected varies from brand to brand, but I prefer 
headsets with higher sensitivity, not because I want to blast my ears at full volume, but because you get finer controls when it comes to volume. So at full power with the Pro X2 light speed, the HS80 Max is about 66% in terms of like how I feel the volume in comparison. And that means I have more headroom with the volume on the HS80 Max, just in case I need it, but also slightly fine the control when it comes to the sensitivity on the lower range as well. Next up, bit depth and sample rate are really important, especially for wireless and USB headsets. Audio bit depth is like the resolution of your audio, so make sure you always set it the highest possible, not just for the audio itself, but also for the microphone. Strangely, the Cloud 3 wireless defaults to a much lower sample rate on the microphone side, which sounds way worse, so making sure you pump it up to give you the best and highest quality of the microphone. And the same applies to the audio. I mean, imagine buying a 360 Hertz display for it to only run at 60 Hertz. That is no bueno. The closed versus open back debate for gaming headsets is an interesting one, but a simple one too, because most gaming headsets are actually closed, giving you the best seal, giving no sound leak on the exterior you know, good for privacy, good for you disappearing into your monitor away from your outside environment. Giving you the most direct audio presentation too, which is good for competitive. That means that any audio cues that you hear are going to be coming from your audio sources and not your outside environment. Open, on the other hand, of course, has its advantages because it's a much more breathable design. Soundstage expansion is like naturally built in, being able to hear things not just from here, but from slightly further away without the need to introduce any surround sound gimmicks or any audio processing because the nature of an open back design is that soundstage expansion that is natural. You can still detect natural sound cues and positionality and directionality of those cues in game with an open style design, but they leak audio in both directions. So not only is not good for privacy, it's also not good for just really critical audio because everything from your environment, especially in the loud space would be audible in your ear cup. I like playing with open headsets for Battlefield just because the sound stage is really large and you can still pinpoint where, uh, you know, certain footprints are coming from while CS2 closed all the way. And before we move on, let's hear a message from today's video sponsor. So this new mid tower definitely has room to breathe, okay? That is with my largest graphics card installed. Good luck finding something that doesn't fit or something that has better lighting than those gorgeous four Lightwings 140mm fans. The view from the front and back. I love the integrated cable bar with two positions, full dust filters at the bottom and the front, the versatile fan and ARGB hub, rotating PCIe bracket, 420 rad support, and of course noise dampening. Basically a very big quiet enclosure, the Shadow Base 800 FX, check it out below. What about multi-platform compatibility for PC, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, etc. So any 3.5mm headset jack will work with any platform that will accept an analog connection, but when it comes to wireless and USB headsets, that's when it's tricky. The good thing is that most gaming headsets have variations either for PlayStation 5 or Xbox, and there's even headsets like the Arctic 7X from SteelSeries that supports them both. Even though it's targeted like for as an Xbox headset, you can see in the specifications, it will support perfect wireless audio for the PlayStation 5, just without the chat mix compatibility. So if it says it's PlayStation and Xbox and etc. compatible, make sure that they are talking about the features that you want in terms of wireless, for example, and not just a potential rerouting with the analog. In my opinion, convenience and comfort are like the things to look out for when it comes to gaming headsets, because you never want to be fighting it in terms of features and functionality and especially not getting compromised with comfort. Now there's actually a lot to cover about ear cups themselves because they're so important. You know, we're talking about density, surface material, how do they breathe, uh, heat accumulation, what's the seal like. And when we look at the surface material, some headsets have the softer fabric where your skin will make contact, but a pleather exterior for better base response and better seal. This in my experience helps with cooling and less heat accumulation, but I've also seen this material to be the first thing to disintegrate because you know, sweat and everything and all the heat. Uh, so keep that in mind for certain ear pads. While some headsets might avoid the whole pleather route altogether for better heat management and also tuning the drivers to actually complement this type of material. But at the same time, don't be afraid of the traditional pleather route because they give you the best seal and the better base response. 
And some companies are smart and incorporate this sort of breathable interior fabric on the inside the lining so you can kind of contain the audio but also let the ear breathe a little bit inside that ear cup. HyperX, for example, has an entire pleather ear cup with these perforations on the interior for that whole ear cup to breathe. Now, density and thickness of the foam matters a lot, but unfortunately, it's not something you can kind of detect by marketing material alone. It varies from really stiff to really soft, and I would say watch the reviews and see how the headset interacts with the skin uh, when the reviewers press into the material. It's also hard to tell exactly how thick the ear pads are are because they might appear very thick, but they might be overlapping with the plastic housing and therefore actually uh, half the thickness than they appear. I'm looking at you, Corsair Virtuoso Pro. What about round versus oval ear cups? What to look for and which one is best? I bet you've never thought about that question before. I generally prefer oval ear cups because they always have appropriate width and additional height for different size ears. The only problem with an oval ear cup is that it might introduce too much uh, tension near the jawline because maybe due to too much clamping force for your head size. But a few little tricks here is that you can always move the headset slightly up or slightly to the side to kind of distribute that uh, clamping force near the jawline. As for round ear cups, I do not like the Virtuosos here because first of all, the ear cushions are not thick enough and therefore they don't produce good enough seal. But I love the DT700 Pro X. It's also a round ear cup, but it's soft enough and the seal and comfort is fantastic. Also, Maxwell is a really cool example because the ear cups are round, as you can see, but the interior of the ear cup is oval to accommodate a better seal. And so I actually don't mind this. This could be a daily driver for me, no problem. I find it really helpful when I get sent marketing photos for upcoming headsets. I notice the type of material on the ear cups, the shape, the thickness, etc. So I can kind of expect the type of comfort we'll get from that particular product. Most of the gaming headsets on the market today luckily have removable ear cups, so you can potentially replace them if they get you know worn out in the future or go full on third party from Wicked, from Drop, etc. for additional comfort and it's absolutely necessary for the Arctis Snow Pro Wireless because the nubbin on the interior, man, it's too intrusive and the included ear cups with the Nova Pro Wireless are beautiful, but they're too squishy and soft. And so over time they get like really squished and you start making contact with that nubbin and that's where Wicked really solves the problem. And now this is my daily driver. Now headbands are fun. They are crucial in balancing out the weight of the headset, not just by the ear cups, by the headband as well. So if you see this suspension like headband, Steel Series earlier stuff all had this uh, self-adjusting headband and even the Maxwell has it without additional size extensions. It's an issue because for larger heads, this doesn't really work if you have a lot of hair, if you like to wear a hat, etc. So make sure when you're buying a headset that it might have or should have size extensions that are separate from the headband. That way you can accommodate whatever size of head you have. I have no problems with the Maxwell, but many people in our review said that they're way too small and they cannot extend the headband beyond what they need. So just be aware of that. Next up is left or right cable exit. So here I have it on the left. And the idea is that if you're a right-handed mouse player, the cable won't interact with this part of your area, which I prefer actually. And also with uh, the cable on your left side, it allows me to easier route it to my amp DAC on my desk. But there are still headsets with the cable on the right side. So if you are a right-handed player, just be aware on which side the cable exists on the potential headset you're about to buy. What about swivel joints? That normally is a huge marketing point when it comes to comfort, but in reality, you know, this is fine on your neck, but I had to extend this thing fully in order to not be kind of choked versus the Corsair headset. The HS80 Max over here is way too tight and I feel a little bit more constrained. I'd rather just take this thing off. Plus the microphone is poking me like, no. I realize swivel joints are good for flat packaging, but most of the time are actually a comfort disadvantage. The normal Pro Wireless is super comfy on your neck, but the thicker padding does raise it uh, up a little bit, and I just prefer to take them off and leave them on a desk and not on my body. While standard gaming headsets that do not have swivel joints kind of fall in the same category, they're not really comfortable on your neck, they're passable, but just be mindful that the swivel joints 
when it comes to marketing are quite heavy there. And I would say it's not necessary to buy something that has a swivel joint. Now, when it comes to weight of the headset, don't be afraid of that larger specification because it's really about how the headset is balanced on your head with the headband and the ear cups and the clamping force all together. This Maxwell is 490 grams. This is a heavy chunker on paper, but you put them on your head, it's easy to live with, just the right amount of clamping force, good support on the headband, so it's fine. While this H3X from Drop is almost half the weight, but because the ear cups are smaller and the clamping force is tighter, I can already feel accumulation of tension right underneath uh, my ears, near the top of my jawline, so weight isn't really everything. They definitely fall into the whole comfort equation, but weight alone shouldn't be a deciding factor. Which leads us to clamping force, which by far is one of the biggest complaints among headset reviews online, you know, because everyone's head size is different, your size extensions might not be enough or too little, and so it's gonna vary. Unfortunately, there's no specific specification for a clamping force that you might get from a manufacturer's website, but I would say watch the reviews, see what people say, read the reviews, and kind of figure out based on weight uh, and the ear cushions and also the style, because right now you can see this is going to generate some tension at the bottom because of this shape, and that's something to also kind of take a look at. You can always stretch the headset overnight, placing it on a box, and that will loosen up uh, some of the joints and some of the plastic and the materials. Definitely something to do if the clamping force is too tight. Now, cable noise is more important than you realize because no one wants to hear the little shuffling of the cable against your materials and sending that a uh, really nasty sound directly into your ear cup. Fortunately, cable noise can be seen from a mile away. If it has braiding, avoid it. This is the Virtuoso Pro. I can touch it directly at the tip of this cable. And this is like a really long one and I can hear all that sound getting pushed directly into my ear cup. So braiding is a big no, but if the cable is like the, the rubberized part, it's perfectly fine and normally has limited amount of uh, cable noise getting delivered. Actually, the cable on the H6 Pro is also braided, as you can see, but it's much softer and much finer threading, so it doesn't send that nasty signal, or at least not as much. It's also partially why I prefer wireless. What about wireless versus wired? So I absolutely love wireless for the sake of convenience, and audio quality has gotten so good that you don't have to compromise. Many premium wireless headsets also offer Bluetooth as well, which is awesome. You just have to keep in mind how that Bluetooth is delivered and if you have simultaneous playback with Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz connections. So on my SteelSeries Note Pro Wireless, I can run Bluetooth from my phone and have something coming from the 2.4 gigahertz base at the same time versus the Pro X2, you can run one source at a time only and switch between the two. I don't know if that's something important to you, but it's always good to know when choosing a wireless headset. The two main disadvantages with wireless is price because they're always so much more expensive and battery life and you have to constantly charge this thing unless you go the route of Turtle Beach or Still Series, where you have an additional battery that you can hot swap that's constantly charging at the base and therefore you have no downtime. Also, a lot of the battery claims on the box are misleading because it comes with a big asterisk of like running the headset at 50% power without RGB if it has any. So treat that number as like the best case scenario and listen to reviewers to what the actual battery life is like. One thing to research about the wireless headset if you're planning to get one is if it works with the cable. So the HS80 wireless, the original one, works with the cable no problem. You can run it as a wireless headset, plug them into your computer with a USB cable and have them as a USB headset. Versus the G Pro X doesn't, the Black Shark V2 Pro doesn't, the new HS80 Max doesn't either. It's all for charging only. It is really unfortunate and something to also keep in mind. And a quick tip, if you're encountering any sort of interference and you have the dongle plugged in to the back of your motherboard, Plug it to the front I.O. of the case instead and see if that fixes it. But standard wired headsets still have a massive role to play. They're definitely more accessible, inexpensive, definitely have better microphones because of the wired connection on most headsets, not some. And of course, cleaner audio in like the, the spectrum of wireless, but still wireless is, you know, it gotten to that point of being so good that you, it's almost indistinguishable versus wired. You have to keep in mind though, cable length is important. So for example, most headsets have a standard 1.2 meter cable that goes into your four pole jack that you can plug into a controller or a DAC on your desk or an amp or it has a longer cable that splits into two so you can route that behind the motherboard, for example, or an extension included. Nope. And knowing the length of the extensions and the main cable 
is uh, always important. And if that cable is actually removable or not, so you could potentially swap it out later. Now, what about microphone detail and function? So microphones have a really interesting space in gaming headsets, right? Like it's what makes them a headset. And so it's a really important marketing feature, but also a very important clarity feature for most users, right? So first of all, is it removable? Does it have the flip to mute functionality? Is it retractable like on SteelSeries? Does it have a mic mute button somewhere on the headset? I love being able to remove this microphone from here in case I want to use this in a public space. So I don't particularly look like a gamer wearing gaming headset outdoors, but it's still, you know, somewhat normal for the public. <laughs> but most importantly, will the vocal quality be enough? And so the thing is, most gaming headsets have just fine microphone. The people on the other side will hear you, but there are a few things to consider. First of all, compression of the application. You will sound very different from Google Meet to Teams to Skype to whatever else you use on this microphone. Discord will sound probably amazing in relation to everything else though. So compression is a huge part in making sure that the other side can hear you and it's not just the microphone quality that it's at play. The thing is, in my microphone roundup video, you can notice the differences in quality of the bass, the fullness of the sound, but that's also partially because you're listening to them back to back. In a gaming environment, that is going to be not the case at all, and it's going to be so many other layers of audio and compression that's going to be added to your voice for the other person to hear that microphone quality almost becomes irrelevant. As long as they can hear you, that's all that matters, right? So when looking for a headset, I would also place equal amount of emphasis on side tone quality. For example, if it's a close headset and you want to hear yourself, like, is that going to be a problem? Is gain going to be a problem? And can you adjust gain in the driver software and not just in the Windows properties? And of course, don't forget about Antlion's mod mic to turn your favorite headphone into a headset. As for your taste and perception of audio, I wanted to leave this for last because it's almost irrelevant you now because audio is so subjective. The good thing is though, over the last few years, gaming headset brands have gotten better. Removing the muddy, very muffled bass and the uh, harsh treble and emphasizing on deeper, cleaner bass and beautiful high end that isn't super, you know, harsh, but clean enough, both in the wireless space and non. I can highly recommend the Pro X2 Lightspeed for really clean audio, lots of power, you know, microphone sucks, but the graphene drivers here do make a difference. This would be my gold standard in wireless audio right now, aside from the Maxwell, but that's almost in its own different category. I love the slight natural sound expansion with the Nova Pro Wireless. Steel Series have been doing this type of tuning for years now, where it's not super direct, but it's direct enough to be really comfortable for competitive play. The HS80 Max is enjoyable, has good comfort for my head size, nice breathable ear cushions, lots of lots of power, but still I prefer the Pro X2, but nothing stands in the way of the Audazi Maxwell. This thing is in a class of its own with absolutely incredible bass and like the planar magnetic drivers that move air and you can feel your audio environment. It's fantastic. Now, the thing is, if you buy a cheap headset, the Black Shark V2X, for example, and expect the best audio experience you've ever gotten from a gaming headset, that won't happen. And the thing is, Razer's tuning has gotten definitely better, but even the Black Shark V2 Pro, which is their higher end one, I still find the, the treble to be a little harsh and I gravitate away from it, aside from when I need to use the microphone. I used to love the bright presentation of AKG and Biodynamics, but now my tastes have shifted. I prefer something a bit more yellow on the Sennheiser side uh, or the Biodynamics DT700 Pro X. The tuning is very different and very to my liking. Of course, it's always good to try before you buy, but that's not available for most audio products anyway. So you have to choose your sources carefully. We've done plenty of headset reviews. I trust Batsy Tech, Ratings.com, Sound Guys have beautiful subjective data on audio products. So take everything, um, you know, when it comes to searching for your new headset and buy responsibly. It's really a matter of picking out the nuances from reviews, from marketing materials, even to understand what the product is before it gets on your head. All right, guys, I hope this whole guide has been helpful. Let me know if you think anything else can be added in the description below. Let's make this educational for the rest of you as well. I'm Dmitri. I'll talk to you in the next video.